So, as you already know, recently it was Tatsuya Nakadai's 90th birthday, and I kind of wanted to just look back at his best movies and just honor him. A few years ago in 2020, we had Toshiro Mifune's 100th anniversary, and it's kind of hard to believe that they were both almost 10 years apart in Yojimbo. Nakadai is a legend, and he's played so many characters in hundreds of movies. And I'd like to celebrate his birthday just talk about his best films. Enjoy. Whenever a genre gets so oversaturated, it takes a film that sort of makes fun of just all of the stereotypical things that you see again and again, and in return it ends up making the genre fresh again. That film is Kill, and I find that it plays a lot like a parody of Chambara films, while at the same time it also gives us an entertaining movie. The director Kihachi Okamoto is one of the most important directors in Japan. He's also given us other samurai classics like The Sword of Doom, but Kill and The Sword of Doom show just the amount of talent and range that this director has. What's also interesting about the film is that it's based on the same novel on which Kurosawa's Senjaro was based. Yet, when you watch both of those films, they're pretty different and unique in their own way. Both those films took the same story and just went different directions with them. But what they both do is they sort of make fun of the traditional samurai. In Kill, Nakadai is a group member who plays the wandering ronin type, similar to Sanjuro. He used to be a samurai, but now he doesn't want to be one anymore, and this is also a great example of just the amount of range as an actor that Nakadai is able to play. Here he plays more of a light role compared to the darker and sinister one he played in The Sword of Doom. Another very great film by Hideo Gosha is Hidokiri. This film just has such great, beautiful cinematography, love the setting, and just the sword fights are so great in this. Another great thing about this film is it has Shintaro Katsu, the star of Zatoichi, but it also stars Nakadai, and both of them share the same screen. Katsu plays this ruthless assassin, and Nakadai is this evil mastermind that hires Katsu's character. The story becomes especially interesting when Nakadai has to kill Katsu. Nakadai is great at just playing a villainous and ruthless character. We've seen it with the Sword of Doom, we've seen it with Yojimbo, and here he just plays it so well. And this is actually just a really different and great samurai film. Definitely check it out. Hideo Gosha's finest film is Goyokin. It will always be remembered by just the beautiful snowy cinematography. But another great aspect about that film is Tatsuya Nakadai's acting. The main protagonist that is damaged and stoic and wants to atone for his sins has been reused many times, but perhaps it started from this film. But Goyokin just shows the brilliance of Tatsuya Nakadai's acting. He doesn't even need to say anything, you just look at him and you know what he's been through. Goyokin was also remade as a western film titled The Master Gunfighter, which actually didn't have much of a critical success. But anyway, Goyokin, it's a great film. So, majority of the films on this list are of Nakadai when he was younger, but what's to say of when he was old in it? Sometimes he has played an older character, but he was actually young, just like in Ron, he's playing a much older character in that. But here, it turns out that age has nothing to do with his acting, and this is one of his finest performances. This is sort of his Unforgiven type film. This is where he's just playing an older character that's coming out of retirement for one last job. But that's not to say that he's been inactive as an actor. He's played in many small roles over the past few decades. 
But he finally returned as the lead in the 2015 film, A Duel's Tale, and then again with this 2019 film, The Return. And he really does return in this film in full form. In this film he plays an aged Yakuza who's now dying and he wants to return to his hometown after 30 years. And now he finally wants to finish what was left unfinished. Could have been cool if this was like a sequel to one of his older films from like decades ago. But it might as well be because I'm sure he's played a similar thing. This is an emotional, dramatic and just powerful film. Especially if you grew up seeing him younger and now you just see him at the end of his life. There's really something powerful about that. It's like his life was always to be an actor on screen. This is easily one of Nakadai's best films. I think it's one of the best 21st century samurai films. If this is the last film he ends up doing, I think it would be just perfect. So, don't miss it. So, Sanjuro is the sequel to Kurosawa's Yojimbo. And actually, someone from my Discord pointed out just how this could be the greatest sequel of all time. Shout out to Jay Tilton. What I like about it is that it stands on its own rather than relying on its prior film. Here, Nakadai plays the role of this corrupt official who is the main rival and problem for Mufuni's character. The film's main protagonist is this nameless ronin and anti-hero who was developed in Yojimbo, the first film. Mifune used to be Kurosawa's main choice since Rashomon, but that was until their relationship turned cold and then he went to Team Nakadai. Nakadai used to be the secondary choice to Kurosawa, but I think since Nakadai could just act in many different types of roles and was frequently seen as the rival to Mifune, that in the end many directors also saw them as rivals. In this film, we get the best duel ever seen. This is where Nakadai fights Mifune. And it's done in one simple stroke, and then it's over. But what people love about this fight, and it was actually an accident, is just the amount of blood that comes out afterwards. And since then, it's become just this iconic scene. But anyway, Sanjuro is just an entertaining, it's at times funny, and it's also violent. And it's definitely not to be missed. One of the greatest samurai films and just films ever made. Maybe even the best sequel of all time. The director Shiro Toyoda's horror masterpiece, Portrait of Hell, is just this chilling and dark film. And here Nakadai plays a Korean painter. And what he does is he kind of goes back and forth with this ruthless daimyo. So at only 37 years old, Nakadai played the role of this prideful artist and an older father of a young girl. This might actually be his greatest performance. And just this film itself was just a hidden gem for me. I never heard about it. And then I watch it and like I love it. And it's gonna be one that I'm definitely gonna be talking about more and returning to. I just love the concept of this film, it's so unique. I'm actually really surprised it's never been done before in another movie. Basically, what happens is Nakadai's character is this painter, and he can only create what he sees. And he's a talented painter, but he likes to paint just dark and depressing stuff. And the daimyo often gets mad at him for doing that, but he doesn't get rid of him because he knows just how good he is. And what the painter's trying to do is just to bring to light to the daimyo that he's creating hell on earth. And eventually the daimyo kids around and tells him to paint hell itself. And he does this thinking that he can't because he's never seen it. And what he does is definitely something you have to see. It's such a great concept. And I especially love just the bleak ending. I won't spoil it. So this is definitely one to check out. Some may say it's overacted, but I think it's supposed to be more like a kabuki play. 
Anyway, this film was just such a pleasant surprise. It's actually strange that it's not more well known. So far, the availability of this film is pretty low. The only place you could get it is SamuraiDVD.com. Samurai Rebellion is a masterpiece. It's done by Kobayashi, Takamitsu does the music, and of course it has Nakadai in it. Nakadai has a smaller role in this, but it's still a really good one. Here he actually plays a friend to Mifune's character, but he also ends up being the main rival because of specific circumstances that you'll have to see. Mifune actually is the main character in this film, but Nakadai also has a very important role. And it needs to be said that the fight between Mifune and Nakadai in this is just one of the greatest. You have to see it to believe it. This is just one of the greatest rebellion films ever made. And Takamitsu's soundtrack just has the strangest power to just affect the audience the way it does. And perhaps that's just what Kobayashi wants to do in this. Don't miss this one. So Kagimusha is often described as being the dress rehearsal for Ron. I think Kurosawa himself described it that way. But I really don't view it that way. I think it's its own thing and it's just one of his best and definitely a top tier Kurosawa film. Here Nakadai actually has two roles in it. He plays this powerful and self-respecting daimyo and he also plays the cowardly thief and the thief in this is being used by the daimyo's men and he sort of becomes the shadow warrior where he's just two different people and that's an interesting role to take you're playing a character that's pretending to be another character i'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude that's never easy but nakadai definitely pulls it off Originally, this was supposed to be for Shintaro Katsu, but apparently Katsu pissed off Kurosawa and then he just gave it to Nakadai. I think you could kind of tell that this role was more geared towards Katsu. I feel like Nakadai struggles to pull off more of the comedic stuff in this. That's the only problem with this role. But in the end, I think he does a fine job. But anyway, I think this is a great film. It's very historical, so it does help to know some Japanese history before watching this. And just overall, such a beautiful directed film. This has some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen. Definitely don't miss it. Another top tier Kurosawa film is High and Low. It's set in modern time Japan. Modern time when the film released, that is. It's probably about like 50 or 60 years old now. It's probably the only film where Mifune and Nakadai are mutual helpers. Nakadai in this is a detective chief who wants to help rescue the kidnapped child of Mifune. This is a really suspenseful film. I think it has one of the most chilling endings. I also think it has one of the best openings to any film. It immediately just captivates you and there's just so much suspense. Nakadai's character in this is just very soft, he's helping, he's understanding, and he's just this young police detective that just wants to help everyone. And it's also, I think, one of his best performances, so check it out. Another really great Kobayashi film is Quiet On. I think it's one of the most beautiful Japanese films ever made. It's my favorite horror anthology of all time. It's also just visually stunning, and I think it's just perfect for around Halloween. The film itself consists of four separate ghost stories, and Tatsuya Nakadai is only in one of them. He's in the Woman of the Snow one. Here he played the role of an 18 year old, but actually at the time he was 32 years old. I think his performance is just perfect, he plays the role of this boy who ends up seeing this snow ghost who kills his friend and after that I don't want to spoil it apart from Kobayashi's expert directing and just highly beautiful and stylized cinematography there's also Takamitsu's soundtrack and I think that's one of the best elements here it really just gives you this perfect haunting atmosphere exactly what you want Yojimbo is one of Kurosawa's most accessible and entertaining films. 
you get both Nakadai and Mifune in the same film. They're both rivals. This is an awesome standoff with the two of them. It's so iconic. And just like in Sanjuro, Mifune plays the nameless Ronin and Nakadai plays the villain. I think this was actually the first time I saw Nakadai in a film. And he's just so memorable as the villain in this. Just his killer eyes. You know he's dangerous. And I especially just love that scene of him just pulling that pistol out. Love that. This is just such a successful and influential Kurosawa film, both in Japan and in the West. It was remade countless times. You know, everyone knows Sergio Leone ripped this off and made a fistful of dollars. He was sued for that. The Django series is also very similar to this. And Mifune's role as the nameless Ronin is just developed in many Western films. And you could definitely tell how much Clint Eastwood was just inspired by this. Classic film. So The Human Condition is a series that runs 9 hours and 47 minutes. It's one of the longest films ever made. But it gives one of the best movie experiences if you're willing to have the patience to sit through it. It is worth it, I will say. It's a, another rebellious film from a rebellious Kobayashi. He loves doing that. It's based on the novel of the same name by Junpei Komikawa. Its story also resonates with the director Kobayashi's own experience in World War II. Kobayashi once said that he's the main character in this, Kaiji, and he always liked to rebel against authority. And that could clearly be seen in most of his films like Samurai Rebellion, and Harakiri also. The whole story revolves around Kaiji, and he is pretty much everywhere in this film. It's actually Nakadai's first lead role, which is pretty huge to start with this one. And this is the one that made him a star, and led to other directors wanting to give him a chance as the lead. And for that, I think that this film is definitely a breakthrough for Nakadai. It's probably very important to him. In fact, Kobayashi is the very man who brought Nakadai to the film world. And he even featured him in about 11 of his films. So Kobayashi just has so many great movies, but this is definitely one of his best. For some reason, not many people have seen it, so I highly recommend it. Kihachi Okamoto's The Sword of Doom is just a perfect anti-hero story. This is about a man with an evil mind and, in turn, an evil sword. Nakadai has that evil mind and here he plays one of the most ruthless anti-heroes ever put on screen. He doesn't hesitate to kill anyone. Old men, women, children, doesn't matter. What's interesting about this film is the main character is unlikable and even the villain. And he's the one we follow. And I feel like even now, we don't see it a lot where the main character isn't likable. I think for some reason people think that every story should be that way. But here proves that that's not the case. I really wish there was more samurai films like this. It's just such a great, dark concept. But it's really Nakadai that sells it. I always felt that this would have been great if Star Wars based one of the movies on this film. I know Lucas was a big fan of samurai films. I think it would have been great if they did this film with Anakin, just having him slowly descend to madness. That would have been a lot better than I think the prequel trilogy that they gave us. Toshiro Mifune once again plays the rival of Nakadai in this, and he's the one that says the line that just defines this movie. The sword is a soul. Study the soul to know the sword. Evil mind evil sword. Just a scene where Mifune says the dialogue and just the sword fight that comes right after this is just one of the greatest fights in film history. Mifune is also the only one that could give Nakadai's character any fear or emotion. And actually the soundtrack does a really great job during a scene. It makes us feel exactly how Nakadai's character feels. 
The only problem with this film is that it was originally meant to be a trilogy. And that's because it was actually based on Raizo Ichikawa's film series, the Satan Sword Trilogy. But actually after I watched that series, pretty much just ends the same way as this film. So in that way I do think that this film stands fine on its own. But just the thought of having two more of these films and how we could have had that, it might have been just the greatest trilogy of all time. I've actually heard that the bloody finale in this is what kind of cancelled the other two films. I don't know if that's true or not, but I could kind of see that. So Ron has always been my second favorite Kurosawa film, right next to Seven Samurai. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. In this film, Nakadai plays a very old character. He's an old daimyo who's basically been destroyed politically as well as mentally and this is kind of because of his past and this story is actually based on Shakespeare's King Lear who was the main influence for this film and I think that Nakadai just performs this character so well like you almost don't know it's him just because of the makeup makes him look so much older than he is and just his acting and how we see this man break and become insane, it's just such a powerful role to play. Almost the entire story revolves around Nakadai's character. And like I said, Nakadai was much younger than the character he played, he was 53 at the time. So he definitely did have some experience by the time he played this. But still, just to perform so strongly and brilliantly in this uncommon role is just very impressive. I also often cite this as being one of the most beautiful movies ever made, just the cinematography and scenery, it's like something out of my dreams, it's incredible, you have to see it. And now we have Harakiri. So like I said earlier, Nakadai played in 11 of the director Kobayashi's films, and this is the one that might actually be his best performance, maybe in his career. It's his best movie, it's one of the best movies ever made. Here he plays a poor ronin, and his son-in-law is forced to commit harakiri, and he was forced by this inhuman, cruel shogun. Nakadai's character then takes revenge, and he's going up against this massive authority. It's, in a way, him taking revenge both metaphorically and physically. And here we watch him just go through this unimaginable pain and grief and then rise up and enact justice. When Nakadai played this role, he was 33 years old and he played the role of a father in his 50s. And in this, he's just this poor, rebellious, and just brave ronin that we never forget. It's an unforgettable character. Kobayashi has made many rebellious films, and this is definitely his most rebellious masterpiece ever. You have to see it. I feel like this is an honor to still be alive with a legend like Tatsuya Nakadai. I feel like all my other heroes just died long before I even knew who they were. But Nakadai has every right to stop playing in movies. He's played so many great roles. He's already proven himself many times. Yet he doesn't seem to want to stop anytime soon, even at the age of 90. And I think that's because Nakadai is a real samurai. I just picture him in his last days with a katana in hand and a smile on his face. Because there is one thing that I know. He loves this. Thank you, Tatsuya Nakadai. Thank you for your film magic and just the many memorable characters that you have given us over the years. You will always live on screen and in our hearts forever.
So, thanks guys for watching. I'm so glad I was able to do this. I want to thank you for an excellent year. Thank you for watching my videos. And we'll see you next year. Have a happy new year. Thank you.